please be seated. Any Texas Rangers fans here? That's good, because you're not going to like this. <clears throat> Any St. Louis Cardinal fans here? All right, I better take this off. Any uh, New York Yankees fans here? Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Moses was the Albert Pujols of his day. Let's face it. Moses, I believe, was a St. Louis Cardinal, or would have been, had there been such a thing. Albert, I don't know if you know who he is, but uh, he must have been sleeping if you don't, because... Last night he joined Paul Molitor and Reggie Jackson and Babe Ruth in some amazing statistics for the World Series. Like Moses, he had very humble beginnings. Like Moses, he was a, uh, an orphan, not quite an orphan, though, like Moses. Raised by his grandmother, they moved to New York, and he saw some intense violence as a little boy, and so they fled to the wilderness. And uh, in this case, the wilderness was Missouri, where I come from, so... You know, he then fled to the wilderness of the Major League Farm System, and Albert went on to engage in triumphal leadership, including last night, and for many times he also has a, a great deal of despair the night before, and there is no promised land for Albert. We don't know the outcome of this World Series, but let's face it, next year there's going to be another one, and it's going to be different it's going to be different. In fact, Albert may not even be a St. Louis Cardinal anymore uh, next year. Who knows? The point is that uh, they're playing now, and that's what's the fun about it. And this is why I like to be a St. Louis Cardinal fan instead of a Yankees fan, because the Yankees always expect to be in the World Series. And it's an outrage if they're not. We, on the other hand, don't expect to be in the World Series ever. And yet we are from time to time, and it comes as a delightful and delicious surprise. And so it becomes about the quality of play, the quality of participation, not about whether you get in the serious or not. And we come to that old and much maligned adage, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. And people like to make fun of that adage, Vince Lombardi in particular, but it's absolutely true. And look at Moses. In the reading from Deuteronomy, which, you know, is supposed to be Moses' final history, and a lot of it is supposed to be his actual words, it talks about his end, and yet he's hale and hearty, his sight is unfailed, he's got a few injuries, like Albert, but there he is on the top of the mountain, looking at the promised land, and then he just stops. Now, you can't really say that it's because he sinned. Some people have tried to say, well, it's because he sinned and doubted God. Well, Come on, who doesn't? All, all the other people with him certainly did that too. They go on to the promised land. The text says that Moses dies there. But in a sense, Moses is the one who gets to live. He lives. The folks, they go to the promised land. And yet Moses, history, his story lives on. It keeps working and living. We're still talking about it right now. If we get to the promised land, in a sense, we're done Right? Once you get to the promised land, what else is there? But Moses is still playing. And you know, baseball, they, they have all these statistics, incredible statistics. They're in love with statistics, and everybody talks about the lifetime statistics, plate appearances, number of plate appearances with the left shoe untied, or, you know, number of triples when the moon is in the seventh house. Of, who knows? I mean, it's ridiculous. We're in love with these statistics, and they're fascinating, sure, but really... That's not what matters. It's the play. It's the play, the playing of the game. And so for us, for our family today, the game we're playing, of course, is what Jesus talked about to the Pharisees, love of God and love of neighbor. It's, it's a love of God that's ineffable. How do you figure that out? How do we love God? How can I go out and say, I'm going to love God today? God, I haven't actually seen God or had a conversation. I can't touch God. It's something that I want to do in my heart and soul, but I can't necessarily do it. It's dark. You remember the 
the singer Meatloaf, who was often more wise, seemed more wise than he actually knew. And he had that song, uh, Once upon a time I thought I was falling in love. Now I'm only falling apart. Nothing I can do. Total eclipse of the heart. That's loving God. We just have to decide to let our heart and our vision be darkened by that because you can't just go out and do it. We fall apart, and like Humpty Dumpty, all the horses and all the men, king or otherwise, can't put us together again. Only God can. And so we turn to loving our neighbors because they're the ones we have. I can get my hands on a neighbor and actually see them and touch them and get aggravated by them and also help them and be here with them. The famous mystic Teresa of Avila said this, though we, don't, though we do not have our Lord with us in bodily presence, we have our neighbor who, for the ends of love and loving service, is as good as our Lord himself. In other words, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with, right? Stephen Stills? Today we're going to play the game in earnest. We're going to play the game by offering our treasure, our estimate, our best and brightest guess of what we'll be able to give treasure-wise to one another over the course of the year. We're going to have a meal with God and one another. Then we're going to have a meal together with our nearest neighbors. And then we're going to go out and care for one another. Like a nursemaid, a mother for another. What a sublime image Paul has painted in this letter that Patty read. Who'd have thunk it? Paul, an image like that, the milk of human kindness and nursing, so feminine and so whole and so, so sublime. And we'll do that for one another today, our day of caring. And we'll do it anonymously. Nobody's keeping stats. There are no lifetime stats about how many windows we wash or how many you know, dustpan fulls of who knows what we took out of here and yon. We just do it. We go out and do it. It's the nature of the game. It's not about our personal statistics. The game, and of course the game we're playing, you know, in, in the fields of the Lord. In a couple of weeks, we'll do something else. We'll have a dinner where we take the money from the dinner and send it off far, far away to people who are just plain starving to death. And the next day, we'll collect food with full tummies for people who are poorly off right here at home. We do it because we want to play well. We just want to play well. We want to be like Jesus in our hearts. Jonathan Edwards is the famous American theologian. He said, true virtue is benevolence to all being, not just to selected ones. We're not measurers of charity. We're not arbiters of goodness. We're not gatekeepers of this love because in the resurrection of Jesus, God has flung the gates wide open so we can go in and out and give and love freely with no end in sight. Amen.